What's going on, guys? It's Snoop603. Welcome to the GameSpeak episode. <laughs> Shit, I forgot what number it is. 20. Episode 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. That's like a milestone of sorts. We never got this far on the original Game Speak, so it is a milestone. Let's all celebrate. Joining me tonight is the usual guests. We have Epona and Scanner Barkley and special guests this week, a couple of knobs from Europe. Well, one guy from Europe and one guy from Australia. Uh, we have Phil and <laughs> <laughs> the Crafty Cockney. I stupidly made a mistake one time of saying uh, of calling uh, Lee Australian. I don't know why, but I did. It happened. So that's kind of been the thing since. He's left. Of course. No, he's good. He's here. He got mad because I called him Australian again. He's like, I'm out. <laughs> oh, now we can't hear him. Mm hmm. That's just the get. best kind of crafty is the one you can't hear. Something. Oh, there you go. You're good. You're good. Yeah, Technology is a real bitch. <laughs> yeah. He's really drunk off a bottle of scotch. Good night. Everyone say hello to Phil and Crafty. Welcome them on board for this week's podcast. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, that was ugly. Up, knobs. Kind of racist. I, I told you guys, these are the guys I'm not allowed to do my <laughs> my English British accent because I get no, that because it's ridiculous. You sound like Mary Poppins drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like Pop. Dick Van Dyke oh, when you do it. Isn't thank it? you. Which is quite British ironic. I am. His name yeah. is quite ironic. <laughs> 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 Especially he's got the word dick in it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I take it as a compliment. Uh, love you, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Never even, never even fucking considered that. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so last week we did host topics. Uh, this week we're getting back to doing uh, community topics. But before I get into it, a couple things we want to cover. Uh, first and foremost, the Patreon. It's still doing really well. Um, we, we've kind of stalled. We really haven't had much luck with it, but the website's still doing really well. Um, I have taken a step back from being a part of the website, but uh, Jess and Scanner and Digital Ghost and uh, Darren Pixel Rep, like everyone's been really kind of taking over and filling in the gaps that I have left because I haven't had the time to be able to take care of it. So the site's still doing really well. Uh, the Patreon... It's still doing well, but we, we really would like to see it hit that next goal of 900 a month so we can uh, definitely bring in more help on a regular basis and be able to compensate them for said help. We, have a, we need a lot of help in other areas other than just you know getting shit on the website. So if you could do us a favor, if you haven't yet, check out the Patreon. We'd greatly appreciate it if you guys could pledge. I mean, it can be anything. It could be a dollar. It could be you know $500. Not saying it has to be a dollar, but it does have to be 500 Just saying it's really helpful to us if you do that. Can I just say there's a lot of the people that I mean I've quit YouTube now, so a lot of people are, are gonna be watching this who even if it's what your uploaded YouTube video, guys, you'll be leaving the link in the video. Just even if you can't ever got the money, just make sure you follow the website, follow the YouTube channel, and follow the switch and show us some support that way. It's it's amazing actually. It's a site for gamers by gamers. Uh, no bias involved. You will love it. Just yep. get involved. And that's why I'm involved in it. So fucking do it. Yeah, you hit your <laughs> beautiful uh, bastards. You hit your t-shirt milestone. You got the the four months set. That oh yeah, I've got a t-shirt coming. Yeah, I can't wait. Way. Actually, well, hopefully <laughs> that address is correct. Otherwise, it's going somewhere else. Oh, I'm so else. looking forward to it. I'm so <laughs> looking forward to it. <laughs> oh. Better have really short sleeves so Crafty can show off the tats. The mm. guns. It's a vest. Done. <laughs> They're fantastic. Nice, dude. They do look nice. I like you that. Me moist. What? I mean, salad. Like... <clears throat> Worst lesbian ever. <laughs> Scanner Barkley, yeah. 2014. It's a, it's oh, she's moist at the right end. It's the <laughs> I'm a better lesbian than Jess. <laughs> <laughs> I think That's we all are. Hey, <laughs> it was Natalie Bummer today. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'll give you. I'll give you points for the dorm. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have anything else we want to bring up before we get into the podcast? I know there's always a Patreon. Uh, oh, just a general thing. If there's anyone out there that is at, even remotely interested in writing anything, it doesn't even have to be writing. Like, I would love to be able to diversify what we have on the website between written articles, which are always nice I, and I feel uh, bring a different level of 
I don't know, uh, passion. I, there's a lot of words I could use and none of them are really sticking out for the one I want to use. But it, to me, it's a bit of a higher level as to how you can go ahead and cover a game. I really, really, really like reading stuff. But not everyone is really down for reading things, so we're always interested in even viewing videos. If you have an idea that you want to run bias first before you go ahead and you know put in the effort of making something, totally fine by that. Go ahead and hit us up in the contact information uh, on the site. You can easily uh, – fuck you, Dark House. Uh, you can find all <laughs> the information there. Uh, I mean, anything. If you have it and you want to just shoot it over to us after you've written up, go for it. If you just want to you know, run an idea by us and see if it's like along the lines of what it is that could go up on the website, shoot it by, shoot it by us and ask. You know, it, it cannot hurt for you guys to ask, and we'll take it from there. Um, I will hurt anybody who asks a stupid question. Don't, don't ask Scanner. Everyone, you've been forewarned. Do not ask Scanner. <laughs> is the Black Gate of Mordor. To yeah, the pretty much. Of it, yeah. Actually, just just while we're talking about site-related stuff, forum denizens, uh, keep an eye out over the next couple of days because I'm going to be dropping a thread for a new thing that we're going to be doing that you guys might enjoy and like to take part in because uh, we all love talking about games. We all love giving our opinion about games. But sometimes putting together an article and writing about a game can just feel like too much fucking work. So what we're going to do is we're going to create discussions on the forum and I will then mine these discussions for awesome opinion and put together a kind of a correlation of a review from the community as a whole. We'll pick one game which we will discuss and then I'll take your points, I'll put them all together in a nice format with everybody getting accredited, and we'll see how that does and see if you guys like it. And maybe some people will like seeing their, their opinions up on the page, and they'll be like, oh, that's cool. My opinion of a game is out there in public, and nobody's calling me a knob. And they'll then move into writing their own stuff. You never know what's going to happen. Yep. So keep an eye out for that, you <clears throat> fucking tools. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah. So do us a favor. <clears throat> uh, make sure that you're paying attention to and following Epona and Scanner on Twitter. Um, if you have any main things, start with them, please. Um, I, as, I guess I may as well say something about it. I have kind of like taken a huge step back from the website. Uh, there's no hard feelings or anything. There's nothing bad going on. My career has really taken it's over. Bad. Um, and my interests have it's shifted. <laughs> um, I've got my mind on other things. And the big thing, I want the website to succeed. And I'm a firm believer that in order for that to happen, you need to have the right people behind it. More more importantly than anything, too, after having the right people is people that have the time for it. I do not have the time that I feel is needed to make it work that I don't feel stressed. So, a tigger, apparently. <laughs> Um, I'm still a part of it in some fashion. I'll be helping out here and there, but it is, uh, I've, I've demoted myself to a very, very lesser role so I can, uh, put a lot more focus <clears throat> back into my family more than anything. And hopefully some personal health issues I need to be taking care of. Jess is trying to show us her titties. No, I realized one of my oh, buttons had oh. popped out. Hang on, I can't look in close enough. I think I can. See. Oh, you <laughs> That was a good one, actually. Oh, that was savage. Good. That was a good one. <laughs> we all know uh, we're in charge all the time, though, so it's fine. Yeah. So, basically, the only thing that's going to happen is the Did site's just going to get better from here on out. Is What's it a your... ghost? Dude, no, it was like a loud thump. Oh. My cat's getting into something. Hold on. All right. <laughs> it's fine, though. It's fine. I'm stepping up. I'm taking over for, for Snoov. And it's going to be a brighter, thinner Dawnbreaker. So it's all good. <laughs> uh... I have to get one in. I have to get one in. <laughs> Wait, Devious. I saw it. Sorry, Devious. Hang on. Let me get, let me get you a uh, yeah, thing. Who, what are you Change laughing subject. at? Change the subject. Change the subject. What are you fucking laughing at? I swear to God. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, so uh, one other thing while waiting for Jess. Um, for those that aren't aware, and to answer Devious, who is in the chat's question... We have um, an apparel store set up on BattleBuddyApparel.com. We have our own storefront. Give me a second. I'm trying to get the friggin' link because I don't know if Sheikbot actually has it. Bam. There it is. Ah! Beat me to it. Anyway, we do have it. Uh, we have a couple of shirt designs. We have three different hoodie designs. We have two pullovers and a zip-up. And then we have three different t-shirt designs, all various colors. If there's a color that you want that you don't see for something, let us know because I'm pretty sure... That we can get other color shirts added as options. I'm like 99% sure that we can do that. Yeah. 
So if you're interested in something we have, um, also they have very good shipping rates, even for international shipping. Like international shipping is still a little pricey, but uh, this guy is great, and he has the best international shipping prices that we have been able to find thus far. Yeah, that was a big fantastic. reason. <clears throat> yeah, like, Crafty's was... shirt was actually the, the cheapest to send, which was interesting. What was it, like seven bucks? No, it was like see? less than four dollars to ship it to him, and it was really? like five bucks for everyone else. But I that's... will never get it. You won't get it until 2018, <laughs> yeah. They just gave it to someone that was walking in the right direction. <laughs> so, we have all that stuff. Can and, you uh... take this? And this guy just said, I, I'm just going to walk the earth. <laughs> 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 so we got all that. We'll be adding more uh, at some point down the road. We got all sorts of good stuff. Uh, but I believe that's it for pre-podcast announcements. We actually took a long time, but there's a lot to cover. So no big deal. It happens. Oh, this without... is going to be a long podcast. Now, <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Without further ado, we're going to jump into it. And first topic is from Shoemass508. It's, uh, funnily enough, that's actually... Uh, the area code I used to live in before I moved to New Hampshire. You know, the better state that's not a shithole like Massachusetts. I'm allowed to say that, though, because I came from Mass. So this question was, if you had to choose to live in a gaming universe, what would it be and why? Uh, Phil, I'm actually going to let you jump off with this. Okay, so, right. So my first thoughts with it was um, I wouldn't want to live with Bloodborne. So I've been playing Bloodborne a bit recently, and it's quite horrifying. Um, so most games involve, like, an inherent level of violence or failure. Certainly most games that I play... And that prevent those places being appealing to live in. So if I think of gaming experiences that I've really enjoyed over the last few years, Alan Wake, Dishonored, Bioshock, The Last of Us, which I haven't finished, but I have enjoyed what I have played, and they're all set in like bleak dystopias that don't really lend themselves to being very welcoming atmospheres, which is kind of what I'm after when I live somewhere. So, yeah, no, none of them, <laughs> particularly. I, I literally, I sat there for probably half an hour while my dinner was cooking earlier, and uh, I couldn't think of one I would really want to be involved with. I, I agree. So, yeah, with sorry. That was, <laughs> you know. I heard Bioshock. I want to live there in the really? Bioshock Infinite Universe. Dude, floating city in the sky. Oh, oh, yeah, no, not, oh, not okay. Bioshock Infinite. Like, old school Bioshock. Bioshock 1. Oh, oh yeah, no, Bioshock I live in the Infinite, Infinite Universe. Nah, no, it all makes sense. Oh, Snoob, Snoob wants to live in a floating city in the sky where the Irish are segregated from him. Like, that's, <laughs> that's how fucking deep I am in his oh, yeah. head, basically. No, it's, that is my just dreamland. Segregation that's, galore. It's just yeah. whiteies up top where they belong. <laughs> that's all I can do. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I'm, I'm kidding. Sudden, I'm kidding. No I don't mean that podcast. whatsoever. The non-racist <laughs> of the podcast. Uh, I just I agreed with Phil because usually games are really fucked up, unless you could live in the world after you had you know defeated all the bad guys and cleaned it up all nice. Um, but for some weird reason, when I read this topic, I kept thinking of Banjo Tooie, like Banjo Kazooie because yep. there are lots of animals for some reason, and I didn't even think Jackalope, which was a, a great idea. Hyrule, obviously, why would I not live there? God, that's dumb. But yeah, they tend to have a lot of... Fucking blonde bitch who keeps telling you what to do. No, but they tend to have a lot of issues with time and space and parallel universes, and I don't know if I want to get into that, but definitely right. want to live with talking birds and bears and turning into dinosaurs. So that was that was me. You want to know what the bear is saying right before it mauls you? Yeah. He's, <laughs> All right. He wears quite stylish <laughs> pants as well. Trousers. Like, right? I know I'm about to die, but I know your thoughts. And fancy pants, by the way. Exactly. Thank <laughs> you. Dead. Looking sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some baller bear pants right there. <laughs> <laughs> I, went, I went the opposite of these losers because... What I do with every question when I'm asked it is I turn it into a question that I actually prefer to answer myself. <laughs> so uh, my assumption is if I'm living in a game universe, then I am bound by the rules and forgiving natures of that game universe. So it doesn't matter if I die because I'll just respawn. You know, what's to, what's to worry about? A little bit of pain before you fucking die? Who cares? So I actually went for like the most brutal, horrible disturbing, unforgiving, nightmarish universe that I could think of that I would love to just test myself on and see if I succeeded or went insane in real life and just went Dark Souls. Why not? Yeah, I love how you turned it into what game would you like to play the most? Hey! 
<laughs> that's, that's basically what it is. <laughs> yeah. I'm the best at what I do, which is answering the questions I want to answer. Uh, no, but like if that's that's the thing. If if it was a forgiving place, you had the same forgiving nature as the game. I'd pick any of them. I wouldn't care because you know you're going to respawn and stuff. It's all good. But if you couldn't respawn, I'd I'm not afraid to say I'd pick something like fucking Kirby, or something like that. You know, something super cutesy. In a world of yarn. Where like the worst thing that happens to you is you bounce off something and make a strange Japanese eight bit noise and. Proceed upon your route again. Or Scrabble. Wouldn't that be kind of like video game though? Scrabble? You could do. I oh, do. Imagine real life Cluedo. That'd be fucking nuts. Like someone yeah, dies every day. Yeah, you're one of those fucking thing. Yeah. Like, eh, eh, eh. Anybody see that mustard prick? I think he's got my crowbar. <laughs> It'd be hilarious. That'd be amazing. No bad bad news. <laughs> um. All right. Next, the shoe mask five hundred eight had. What is something that died out from the past you wish would make a comeback for the present? For example, I miss land parties and events because playing with a group of friends was more enjoyable than playing in a lobby full of random people who barely play the fucking objective. Oh, uh, Jess, I'm going to make you tackle this one first. said, I miss um, local co-op, if I'm completely honest. Because I don't know if it's just my lack of real-life gamer friends, but um, I don't... I don't know the last time I've, maybe with Mario Kart, but I really only play Mario Kart with my friends when we're playing a drinking game, and you have to chug the beer before you finish the race, but you can't drive while you're drinking it. It's called Don't Drink and Drive, and never mind. We're hilarious, and you guys don't understand. <coughs> but I miss the four-player split Just... screen with Goldeneye. My whole family would get on it. We'd be like paintball mode, and I'd be drawing like faces on the walls because I didn't really know how to draw a penis yet because I'd never seen one. And it was just Still very haven't. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it was exciting. I miss that. And the TVs nowadays are huge. It's like it's perfect for splitting that screen up. I want more of that. I need more. I need better friends in your life. Why no one like playing so split probably? screen with me because I would always screen peek and cheat. Oh, yeah. Stupid. I was dirty. <laughs> Dude, I miss um, like land parties. And by land party, I mean it was literally like me and fake thriller. Chris. Yep. And um, our buddy. Falling asleep in front of an open fire. <laughs> hand in I hand. I love you, Chris. <laughs> yeah. He stroked my chin ever so gently. I'm um, so glad we finished our Sonic co-op run. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Wow. Anyway, <laughs> we had uh, this is me, fake thriller, our buddy Alex, and uh, sometimes. His friend AJ or his uh, or Fake Thriller's brother would they would all come over, and like that was me dragging my 42 inch TV and my PS3 so we could play fucking Call of Duty, and we just get in there, stomp on kids playing Surge and Destroy because if you're the last person left, you just have to watch everyone else's screen as they're you know they're going around spectator mode, fucking looking where they are. Like oh okay there they are that's easy. I miss those days. That hasn't happened in years. But we all switched over to PC and. Uh, I fucking flat out refuse to drag my PC anywhere. It's a little different when you're lugging around, you know, a $250 potato, but a $2,500 glorious box, you don't fuck with that. <laughs> glorious box. <laughs> what do you say? Arcades. Sound? <sighs> Sounds like what Jet. No, never mind. <laughs> I miss arcades. <laughs> I, ooh. Yeah, I see. Cool. I can't really see, say all that. My, all my social. Like, there was no fucking internet back when I was but a child. If you wanted to socially game, you had people come to your house. Or if you wanted to be like, you know, big dick baller spending those, those, you know, little coins that we used to have as money before we all got this plastic shit. We'd, uh, you know, you'd go down to the arcade and the guys from the school that you hated, they'd be across the arcades. So you'd be like playing Street Fighter, like a fucking, oh man, if this guy was here, I'd fucking give him the old, you know, Sonic Boom or whatever. And it was awesome because if you, if you lost... You had to lose, you know, like a fucking, like a man about it. And if you talk shit, you got a few slaps. Like if you beat a guy in an arcade and he turned around and went, oh, I had sex with your mom. He wouldn't get to finish the sentence. Like you'd just be smack. That'd be it. It was awesome. Now everyone's protected on the internet. Yep. <clears throat> so basically what I miss about computer games is real world violence. <laughs> and Dark Souls. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best game I ever played as a kid. 
Dark Souls. Oh. Uh. You guys are supposed to be carrying this while I'm talking to the chat. Sorry, no, we're answering the question. Yeah. You need to pay, oh. you need to I pay answered. Attention. You, you need answered. to be like chairing this shit, man. Um, Sorry, I'm sorry, pointing I, people. Phil! I miss Nintendo as a relevant manufacturer of stuff. Um, because they, they, right, so I grew up with Nintendo systems, uh, the NES, Game Boy, Super Nintendo, uh, N64, and uh, um, GameCube, and then they stopped, and all of those were incredible, apart from possibly the GameCube, um, but it still had a great controller, and then they stopped, and they did the Wii, and the Wii U, and they just completely went away from what their, their core audience wanted, and I think that's a shame because um, Nintendo have got the the, the right intellectual properties um, <clears throat> still, and and the like the character base, uh, and and just the way that they've always like created their games are incredible and immersive, and they they kind of what they're why I play games because that's what I played when I was younger, and that's what started it all off. Uh, and they don't make um, hardware that I would want to buy now, and I think that's a shame. I miss that. You don't want to go out and buy all the Amiibos? No, I don't. I, I did buy my wife a uh, the new 3DS XL uh, for Zelda. Valentine's Day. Yeah, with Zelda. She's played about an hour of it so far. That's it. But I haven't touched that was, it. That was, that was worth it. I know, it was really worth it. Yeah, yeah. So. I'll, t- I'll tell you what I miss. I miss the time when gaming was a purely personal experience. And it was nothing to do with anyone else. There was no multiplayer, and it was all about you and how well you achieved your goals. And I, I, I well, why don't you unplug the router, mate? Well, play you know, by yourself. Yeah, I, I missed that. I missed that when you should, like fucking 15, 20 years ago, you sit in your bedroom playing, playing Final Fantasy for 12 hours and. <laughs> No, no one jumped in and helped you. No one, no one helped you defeat the final boss or whatever. You did that on your own, and it was a very, it was a very personal experience. And I remember, um, I think it was, um, was it Grand Theft Auto San Andreas? I, I was, I was going to work. I was, I was running a pub at the time, and I'd be going in, and there was a guy, one of my barmen, I actually employed, who'd. Um, he bought the game and he got a bit further than I did, the bastard. And we were drawing maps on napkins in the pub, <laughs> <laughs> how to pick up this gun, you know. Mm. And and that and that was special. That was amazing. You know, you actually had to talk to each other. <laughs> I bet you can talk to each other online, though, surely. Yeah, but that, that took away from it. That took away from the sense of achievement achievement you got from actually doing it on your own. And I kind of miss that. I kind of miss sitting in my bedroom playing Duck Hunt on the Sega Mega Drive on my own, <laughs> um, completing levels and not needing any help. There was no Google. There was no you know YouTube guides. There was it, you. You were literally on your own, sort of thing. And I I kind of miss I, I kind of miss that because you had to work shit out on your own. There was no help nowadays. You find a game that's got a puzzle in it at all, you literally just tap it into YouTube and there it is with 150,000 views. You know, full screen that bad boy. Oh, that's how you solve it. So it, it really, I mean, for developers as well, it doesn't really matter what they do. Someone's going to work it out and the moment they do, it's going to go up on YouTube and your entire game is worthless. So I'm, I'm glad I cheered things up. Mem- I think memory cards Fuck spoil it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you get save points. You weren't forced to actually fucking sit through and beat the damn thing. Yeah, no. yeah. You, like you, when you, you used just, to have to like, you know, yeah, when you used to have to sort of leave the leave the Nintendo or whatever on overnight, or leave your PC on overnight because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you had to go to bed and still get up in the morning and like try and crack that boss in Doom or whatever. But and when you turned your TV back on. Yeah. Please, please still be there. Please still be yeah. there. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> when you didn't yeah. even turn your TV off and forgot about it and came back and there was a couple of fucking images from the game burned into the fucking tube. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> <laughs> oh. But now it's just like two attempts. Nah, it's too hard. 
Google. Yeah. See, back right. in my day, I had to sit there and try and figure out how to beat the game because I was too poor to afford Game Genie to get me all the cheats. <laughs> game Genie was for scrubs. And I am but a scrub. What do you, you want? Beat the game. If you saw a kid with Game Genie, you kicked his fucking ass. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey. That's the way that worked. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Scary. 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 Well, Crafty you know, is outside. Out. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's pickled his brain too much. <laughs> no, I'm just an old scanner. <laughs> we, we were more willing to uh, invest time and effort and thought process into oh, absolutely, stuff yeah. when we were kids, I think. I'm just lazy now. Give me the answers, please. No, I don't, I don't think it's because, because that's what we did when we were kids. We just didn't have the tools to cheat back then. I think back then, if we had the tools to cheat, we probably would have, because that's what kids do. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, it's, you know, it's so easy. You know, you probably have one, possibly two attempts at a, a, a main boss or a maze or a labyrinth or whatever you're trying to do, and if you fail once, possibly two times, fuck it. You can open that laptop, that PC, your pad, whatever. You're going to fucking look up the answer and you'll be through that. You know, it's that's not Unless what gaming was when we were young. You just get mad and you send the game back. <laughs> and then buy it again. <laughs> I you know was going right? to say, or else you go on Twitter and just start bitching about the game being bad. <laughs> like, yeah, but it is bad. I had to it's not. You. Shut up. I had to toss you under. Sorry. It's not bad. It's just hard. See, that's what I see. The thing, I, I'm, I'm slightly different. So I, I don't look up guides. I don't look on YouTube or anything. If I get to a point in a game like Bloodborne, for example, because it's frustrating, um, if I can't do it, I don't look it up. I just put it away and don't play it again, which is exactly what I did as a kid as well. I just, that's it. Game over. I'll play I mean, something you guys else. sound like no fun. When I got stuck when I was like eight and nine, my mom had the Prima guide. She would like get it with the game, and when I would get mad, she'd be like, "Oh, maybe you should try going left, honey." And then, I, <laughs> and then I would. And you were like, "Shut up, mom! <laughs> Shut up, mom. <laughs> Leave me alone! <clears throat> Take Jess your stupid like, book with you!" <laughs> Jess, were you the kid that would just like pound the corner, like, "Mom, I can't beat it," and your mom would beat it for you? Oh God, no! Oh, when we would all play Goldeneye together, my brother and I were like, "Not, nah, not on mom's team." It was awful. <laughs> She was like, how does this? She'd be like, that one in the <laughs> jokes where you're spinning around shooting the ceiling. I used, to, I used to kill bosses and shit for my dad. Who, like, he had no interest in games until uh, PGA Tour Golf was a thing. And then all of a sudden he was like, he was like, there's a golf game I can bond with my child. And I'm like, why will you not fuck off? And why do you keep making me play this <laughs> shitty golf game with you? But from there, he kind of got more into games like platformers and stuff. But he'd get stuck on bosses. Um, partially because of those, like, you know, the older generations who have done, like, manual labor their entire lives and their hands are these enormous fucking shovel-like things. <laughs> like, it looks like a fucking bunch of bananas. Like, it's, it's terrifying shit. So he had these giant hands and giant fucking thumbs and he's trying to play games with little fucking game pads and whatnot. <laughs> And he'd be like, I can't do this, son. You're going to have to do it for me. It's like, fuck's sake. <laughs> I funny still, shit, though. I still have the, you know, that was a milestone in my life when I got better than my dad at, at video games and various other things, like building a computer. My dad used to That's be the cool. tech-savvy one, and now... And pulling like, chicks. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <What> the <laughs> reaching <laughs> stuff on the top <laughs> <laughs> Man, you are quick filled. tonight. I don't think he really brought the, the playing games into it. <laughs> it was all about the pulling shakes. <laughs> oh my god. Right. <laughs> oh, crafty, fuck. crafty. We're going to have Crafty back on every week just for this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my god. 
Keep your ass humble. <laughs> <coughs> oh, All right. I don't play. I don't play with the ladies. Straight up. All right, what's next? Come on, Snoop. I'm just watching oh, to see Snoop. what she's doing. All right. Uh, last one from Shoemass. What game gave you the most feels and why? I'm going to take this one first. Batman Arkham City. I don't know why. I thought there was a little bit of uh, a sentimental attachment there to the Joker towards the end. And fuck y'all if you care about spoilers because this game's been out forever and a day. So I I'm pretty sure the statute limitations on spoilers has passed. When the Joker dies at the end, I, it was what? it was kind of a little bit of a scent, like a little emotional thing. It was like, <laughs> yes, he fucking died. The Joker's in that game. <laughs> good, I'm glad he's dead. <laughs> it was like it was good though. I really liked how they did the end and everything. It just it worked out well, and I was like, I was like, wow, that was actually that was really good. And that one, Bioshock Infinite, uh, was it different kind of feels, but like legit like feels, even though they're really minor. Batman Arkham City. It was a good, good, eh, good game. Who's next? The so Last of Us. Jump right in there. I Don't be shy. My little take purple the reins. Line. I'll take it. Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> uh, the, the the last the Wait. last scene in that game. Go on. No. I just I, the weekly Snoop hasn't played this fucking game. I haven't game played series. it. Raise so my hand. I have not played Final Fantasy. Any of them. And I haven't. Weekly oh, I scanner I being fucking line. disappointed in me. <laughs> Um, wow. Continue, please. <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy VII, the last scene of that. And I'm sure there's a lot of people in the chat have seen it. And played it. Um, yeah, I, I didn't cry or anything, but I had a couple of tears. And cause I think it's because I game didn't cry. Wait, so wait, wait, wait. I didn't cry or anything, but a couple of tears. That is crying. <laughs> it's, it was a long game. Okay. <laughs> you know, I had really dry eyes. I used Optrex and everything. Oh, okay. But that's a long game, and um, towards the end of it, the story. I mean, it's like, it's like 300 fucking hours to complete that motherfucker. <laughs> and I did. Got to the final boss, beat him, and people died. And it was horrible. And. Did you say yeah. 300 hours? Oh shit! Fuck. <laughs> He's honest about it. Yeah. Maybe you like to yeah. explore. Good game. Really good game. Uh, you know, really good scripts actually. And I've always, I said this. I think I said this on Cat Malotion as well. I've, I've always been a massive Final Fantasy fan. And I think they're the games I've spent the most hours inside. <laughs> he knows what I'm saying. It sounds porny. It just sounds. Irish Jesus knows what I'm saying. Yeah. That's the joy of uh, CDs, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and wet wipes, my friend. <laughs> uh, okay. But yeah, yeah. That I think. I think for me, that was the most emotional game. It was um, because. Because the game take, I, I, mean, I don't know if there's any other games you've played where you it's it's taken such a long time to. Where's he gone? I think he's gone for a shit. <laughs> where the game's taken so long to actually complete that you you've actually like bound with the characters that are within it, and the the moment of completion, you're like it's not it's not what happens at the end. I suppose it's what is that you're letting go and that you're not going to play with them again. You know, you're never going to see him again. It's a bit of an emotional experience. But for me, that was it. That was my one. Sean's opening another Sam Adams. My bad. I almost dropped my beer. I said the Sam last Adams, one. You've got it was easy. nothing to apologize about. <laughs> see, I, I, I struggle with this one. Because, um, I mean, I... Um, I mean, I cry. Not cry. Well, yeah, okay, sometimes. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll admit it. I'll cry at films. Um, <laughs> and, you know, TV shows and stuff. You know, if it's emotional, um, some adverts, whatever. Never a game. I've never been that sort of emotionally invested, I don't think, in a game that it's, like, like moved in that way. Don't think. But also, um, a lot of the games that, like, we're all talking about, or you're all talking about, I haven't finished. I haven't been asked to. So... You I suck. Possibly. Yeah, probably. Why do we keep I, getting people on this podcast? You suck. Oh, fuck you. 
I'm, um, I'm, I've played more games than Snoop, but I probably haven't finished more, if that makes sense. Yeah. At this point, I'm seriously doubting Snoop can even finish a wank. <laughs> oh, that's one of the few oh. things I can't finish, my friend. <laughs> you, can't, you can't slow it down. <laughs> Three pounds in a square, yeah. Well, it only hey. takes 30 seconds. It's really easy. <laughs> Feels. I don't know. Like, yeah. Are we going to qualify? Like, you need to be crying to have feels, or can you not just feel? Feels. No, just feels. Yeah, feels. Like, you felt an These emotional feeling. These guys are just feeling. pussies. I mean, yeah, sorry. Lots of games. I didn't cry. These lots of games. Me. Lots of games gave me feels, I guess. Uh, the, the, the reveal in Infamous. That was like a whoa moment. Because I was into that game. Like, I was, I was in Cole's head in that game trying to figure out how he was dealing with his shit and how he was feeling. And next thing, ba boom, this big reveal happens. And I was pissed. I find I'm more, I guess, because I'm like angry in my, in my heart. But like, I'll get genuinely angry at a character in a game like Vaz from uh, Far Cry 3. Like, the entire ending of Far Cry 3 sucked all penis because Vaz was already dead. That was the whole point of the game was to kill him. Vaz was, at that point, probably to this point, the best baddie Yeah. in any fucking game. He was an arsehole. He's amazing. I wanted to kill him so badly. I I needed to kill him. And I did. I killed him. Uh, but you killed him in a cutscene, quick time event. Yeah, it's stupid. Yeah. Like, thanks for robbing me rubbish. of my victory, you fucking imbeciles. Yeah, absolutely rubbish. Uh, Homeworld, when you come back from your testing and your entire planet is burning in front of you, that's actually like a really stunning moment in, uh, in games. It's just a really fantastic little kind of, oh, yeah, look, this happened. And you're like... <gasps> What? It's it's great, and the music is Your great. Your has gone. And even even the VO, like even the, the the voiceover back then when voiceovers were fucking terrible, like for a terrible voiceover, it's good. You know that way. Yeah. Everything was just like a right kick in the old heart for that. It was good. Spec ops the line, that makes you feel all kinds of weird, uncomfortable things. It's good. Oh, the scene where they've dropped the um. Yeah, they dropped the phosphorus. Phosphorus bombs. And she's holding the baby. Yeah, and you're like, that's really starting to freak me out. That was a great game. They got a lot of stick. But that, of course that, it did. That pushed the envelope, that did. It was blue on blue, and everybody hates that. Everybody hates that concept. It should always be like blue on red. There should always be a clearly defined bad guy. The bad guys should never be produced by the same system that produces the good guys. Oh, causes that, a lot of that, narrative conflict for a lot of people. I enjoyed that. Yeah. So, Never memory. played it. You stuck? <laughs> Good, I'm not the only <laughs> no, I'm not the only one. I'm reading the chat as we're all talking and <laughs> Slat saying, I got the feels when my Kerbals and Kerbal Space Program shot out of orbit and drifted into space forever. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, no. that's a great fucking game. I've never <laughs> played it, but I love watching it on YouTube. My favorite is Robos. <laughs> <laughs> guy's fucking great. Swedish Viking. <laughs> oh, all right. I think we've thoroughly beat that topic to death. Move on to the next one from Limit. Limit's always got pretty good ones. He says, uh, his question is, what's your opinion on gaming-centric products? For example, gaming chairs, headsets, microphones, drinks, and uh, glasses, just to name a few. That's not just a few. That's pretty much all of them in a nutshell. I don't know what other gaming things are in there. Um... Scanner They're shit. Yeah, thank you, dude. That's my same opinion. Like, like, there's certain things that are exceptions, but that kind of goes without saying because there's fucking literally everything in life. There are exceptions <coughs> to the rule, um, with the exception to that rule being that you know Snoob is a gamer. No, no, I don't play anything. Go ahead, see it's self burn. See, Scanner's got me conditioned to just fucking make fun of myself at this point. At this point, he that just sounds makes like an abusive relationship, every man. Night. It's great. It, 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 it is. It's, it's difficult to watch. <laughs> it's like an abusive relationship <laughs> it's a bit yeah so like, oh, where do I put my you. eyes shit but no gaming specific anything is shit the fuck the- <laughs> <laughs> it's either it's either gonna be a, like look at that gaming specific hat and wig that <laughs> Lee is rocking right now does that give it's- you plus 10 energy for <laughs> plus 10 gaming stamina 
it's that's either going to be so. like a shitty a shitty fucking product that can't compete in its own market so it's trying to invent some fucking niche market by appealing to gamers it's like what the fuck are uh, like uh, gunners and shit like that they're a little more than like a treated lens that you can get for like 10 bucks in any swimming f- or in any fishing shop yeah and that's it. And here's one for you fucking geniuses. If you play games for so long that your eyes really get super sore, do this. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking morons. Gaming you. energy drinks. I won't even that's bother going into the shit. science oh, of why they're bullshit. Done. Please they're please complete done. fucking bullshit. If you're tired, sleep and eat, you twat. <laughs> like... People can release as much gaming shit as they want, and that's fine by me. Because the second I see anybody with some weird gaming-specific process or product that isn't actually, like, powering their game, like it's not a CPU or a GPU or RAM or something like that, like you've got a fucking DX racer chair and gunner's glasses and you're drinking your fucking G Fuel, that's great. Do it all. Waste all your money because I know you're a spastic and I need never speak to you. It's perfect. (laughs) No, I got it. Level of Snowman <laughs> quoted me saying, gaming items are shit. Snoo 603, while wearing headphones. Fuck you, these are Sennheisers. These are not gaming headphones. I got these because I listened to the fucking wonderful Scanner Barkley on suggestions for just good audio headphones that not specifically for gaming were just good quality headphones that had really good range and audio quality. Holy shit, these things are worth every fucking penny I've ever spent. I paid $112 for these headphones. Not gaming headphones, just headphones. Previously, I had a pair of Plantronics Gamescoms. Sound was still pretty good. Mic quality was average, but the comfort on them was absolute shit. And I, uh, I think those retailed at 100 Prior to that, I had a pair of Triton AX Pros. Mic quality, pretty good. Sound quality, pretty good. Nothing right home, $180. These things are hands down this and my fucking Snowball microphone, 150 total invested. Hands down better than anything I've ever fucking bought before that period. Guess what? None of them have a fucking gaming label to them. Most shit that has a gaming, like, gaming label on it is shit. It is gimmicky bullshit that they're just trying to capitalize on people that, you know, they're like, oh, it's fucking gaming, I gotta get it. And they don't really know any better. If you, it's like anything that you buy that you're willing to invest your money in, take the fucking time to find everything comparable in a price range that you're comfortable with, and don't look in any one specific category, i.e. gaming. And just read reviews and see what people have to say and also compare technical aspects of it. You get your money's worth out of it. Don't, for the love of God, don't get caught up in the fucking gaming things. It's bad news all around. Look, definitely don't listen to big fucking YouTubers and streamers when it comes to their little endorsements and their oh, fucking sponsorships. No. I, I could fucking take a look at the top 10 streamers on Twitch right now. And I could get them all to endorse my dick if I'd let them have it enough for free. That's just the way the fucking market works. <laughs> Got a sore throat? <laughs> get yourself a fresh stuff <laughs> yeah. Skinner Barkley throat yogurt. That's fuck. I'm just, I'm just fucking saying it like it is. <laughs> Give me fucking free shit and I'll endorse that shit. That's the way these morons fucking work. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. I think I might die on the stream. <laughs> There's a gap in the market for fucking billboards, and Twitch and fucking YouTube is going out of its way to, to fill that fucking gap. Yeah. Was it free traders are the thing, aren't they, at the moment? There's like, we have like TV adverts over here with their uh, Ali A in the background and um, robots and shit like that, and fucking maths and free traders. It's mental. <laughs> But yeah, it has no difference. It makes no difference, is it? I mean, you know, you eat what you fucking want and drink what you like when you're playing games. It's games. It's whatever. Someone put in the chat as a steering wheel count. It's like no, that's an Im- that's an important peripheral. It's like a controller or a joystick or something. It's just stupid ass glasses. And- yeah, it's like out. some stuff is really important. Like how you actually play the game. Like a mouse, let's say. Ev- like every fucking second you sit at your PC. For the most part, your hand is on your mouse and your hand is on your keyboard. So I would argue that your mouse and keyboard, from the point of view of function and ergonomics, is actually really fucking important. Something like your GPU, your CPU, the console that you end up spending your fucking money on because it's a big fucking investment. This kind of stuff is really important. 
But still, seriously, do you want to like, do you want to put too much weight in the opinion of some dude who's actually being paid to tell you that something is good? Fuck no. Go off, find a decent like review site that gets sent review stuff. Find a site that is willing to pan a product that you yourself know is bad. Because then you know that one, the reviewer looks for similar things in a product that you look into and they too were disappointed and B, they're actually willing to say that something was shit. The majority of gaming specific stuff that rests outside of hardware is bullshit. Like a gamer chair, a gamer chair, really? Load of old wank. If you want a super comfortable chair, go down to bus stop, find a big fat person and sit on him. It's comfy as fuck. And then try and convince them to just live There's in no that. such thing as a gamer chair. <laughs> it's just a bucket seat that people have pulled out. <laughs> Dead people's fucking RVs who've died trying to fucking make that jump. And, <laughs> and they give it to you. This isn't true, actually. Yeah, don't, the only risk with don't, my... Don't break or I'm not responsible for any of the comments I make tonight. The only um, risk with my plan is that they might try and eat you. <laughs> That's it, though. Yeah. You're a real good-looking boy. It's a it's a fifty-fifty chance. I'm so sorry, I seem to have dripped some sauce on your neck. <laughs> the scan is right. What the fuck is going on right now? Shit. <laughs> hey, you know I get extra Where weird when crafty's around. Where am I? Mm. Help. Some peripherals are good. Some peripherals are bad. Bad. Some I have of the some, game um, keyboards they produce today are just fucking maniacal. I don't know why people buy them. Um, and some of the attachments that you put onto game pads? Uh, what the fuck? I, I've, I've got some little little dobbins that go on the uh, joysticks on the on the PlayStation controller. They're like, they're meant, to, they're meant to help with aim and that. Dobbins. Gubbins, they, yeah. Are they those control freak things? They're not control freaks, no, they're cheaper than that. But, <laughs> but you see, that, that to me is acceptable because that's like a mechanical, ergonomic change that you're making. But it's like fucking work. 16 quid, isn't it? <laughs> like, per pair. Yeah, yeah, I mean, these ones send were on Amazon. Up. It was like three quid for four. It was, I'll send a dorm fish. around to look after you, Jess. And then you want to pay another 16, 17 quid on top for your control freaks. Whatever they may be, you know, TM. Nuts. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know, mate. I mean, my, my PS4 controller, the sticks on that, they're wearing off. The rubber is coming away. And I was looking around to find rubber to replace that. Not to extend them, but just to, you know, reinvigorate my pad as it were. <laughs> you needed to replace your rubber. Needed some extra uh, rubber for your stick. Yeah. This is two conversations yeah. at once. You speak to my haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like, it's rich, it's ludic ludicrously expensive now. Gaming's getting pretty expensive. Well, it depends. It's all relative. It depends on what you really want to spend. Like, if you want to go fucking ham, yeah, it gets expensive. But if you're just fine with going middle of the road stuff, it's really not that bad. Well, I think it depends on what you want to play. It depends on what you want to see when you want what uh, what you play. Yeah. Mm. Doesn't really. Uh, I'm trying to think how I want to word that. Yeah, no, I'll stick with what I said. It depends on what you want to see in what you play. I mean, for console, it, it you know, console's console. It is what it is. You get exactly what you get. For PC, you don't really have to make a huge investment to be able to play crazy fucking unless you want to see top notch. Absolute ultra graphics with a retarded amount of frames per second. You don't need to invest a lot of money. Um, casual shenanigans gaming podcast. They proved that. They spent 350 bucks on a PC that they built. And it plays every game that they've put on there. 1080p at 60 FPS. Um, it granted it's like, out within eight months as well. Yeah, so they put Crisis 3 on there or something. They uh, Actually, that one I don't know. But it, it's, it, it's kind of one of those points like, okay, so if you can do that for 350 with... Some used, some new, some refurbished parts. You know, like a six, seven hundred dollar investment. Did you which see the really... smoke coming out of the graphics card next to like... <laughs> That's what <laughs> they don't show you. Yeah. They but, don't show you that shit. 
<laughs> I mean, it's, it's longevity. I mean, you, you can play that for a few months. Yeah, fine. But over, but over the, the course of time, I mean, you guys are all PC gamers. Come on. That, that's, that's not going to last. You, no, you, that's you can drop 350 quid and, or dollars, and you can play that for six, eight months. And that graphics card is going to burn itself out. Oh, God, no. No, absolutely not. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Dude, it, like, okay, so I think like a, a 680 right now will probably run you like uh, 200 bucks. And that's still a pretty good card. Actually, no, Jess, what did you just get? The 690? 960. Uh, 960, yeah. 960, sorry. Uh, and it was 200? Yeah, I believe that so. That card will probably last for three years. Granted, it, it's not going to get to the most absurd level of graphics and an insane amount of frames per second, but she'll still get... So, and I, it's, I hate saying it like this because I don't want it to seem like I'm ragging on console, but it will look and play better than console for several years to come. And that that's kind of what I like about PCs. You can just chip away at the pile. Like you, If you want to go ham and buy like a fucking 980 and drop 500 bucks on it, you don't need to upgrade that card for like five years before it becomes to the point where like, okay, maybe you're not playing every game at like 100 FPS on ultra settings anymore <laughs> but it's gonna take a while before you make that card obsolete it's just it seems like most pc gamers just kind of have this obsession with always wanting to upgrade fucking apparently a lot of pc gamers are rich i don't know where the fuck they get the money for it they fucking wish they could <laughs> everyone's just maxing out their credit cards they don't give a fuck yeah, i have they no fuck. children that's the and no about, debt that's the thing about pc gamers there's maybe like five percent have like really like kind of top end shit and then everybody else has good stuff and then this like large group of people have fucking integrated graphics. Yeah, but a lot of the twats we know have it yeah. all given to them as well for free. But they like the product, bro, so that's okay. Oh, of course yeah. they like it's, the it's, product. It's, 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 <laughs> it's okay to get free stuff so long as you're positive about it. That's okay yeah. then. Yeah. Hey, it's not as if I'm I accepting products I don't like. Stood next to people in Eurogamer while they've been handed brand new <laughs> shiny graphics cards. Remember that, Phil? Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Well, what do we get? How many subs you got? <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was. That was literally, that was the conversation. It was good times. Oh, my God. How many subs you got? I don't we were honest. So, see, that's, that's the trick to yeah. it. How do you think yeah. I got my free $2,500 PC? I had a big channel. You I got invited to a crisis absolutely. tournament. I'm not going to mention names. <laughs> But when you guys who paid for and flew in from Scotland and they had no interest at all in going to that conference. But they flew in, they picked up their free... What, what, what was it that at the time? It was, it was, it was 980s. 980s, yeah. They, they flew just in, around. they picked up their new 980s before they were on the market. And the uh, Shield. The new 980s, and they pretty much... Oh, they gave him a shield tablet as well, didn't they? Yeah. Dude, and I would they, take a free plane ride to go get a free $600 fucking off. GPU to fly straight on for free again. That was like right in front of me and Phil as well. We're like, mm. okay, we're, we're just arseholes, are we? We're, we're chopped liver, that's yes, the thing. Yes, you're yeah. arseholes, yes, yeah. you're arseholes. <laughs> Got and nothing. They, yeah, they just and flew off again. Jesus. Yeah, it was wonderful. So Did that's you, what it's like to be the one percenters of YouTube. It's really what the it comes down to. The like speed life is not from highlight. Yeah, match, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the, if, if, if you get the endorsements and, and you can, you know, you can constantly throw new stuff into a PC, I suppose it probably makes sense, doesn't it? But, yeah, well... Know. It's not for me. I'm, I'm perfectly happy to, you know, I use a... I, don't, I, I have a PC at home. I don't even turn it on. This isn't on a PC now, so... There's, there's ways and means to do it, I think, where you can remain honourable. Like from okay, this is this is me, right? If AMD turned around to me in the morning and said we'd like to do a sponsorship with your channel, I'd say no. I'd say I'm sorry. I have purchased Nvidia graphics cards. I've never purchased an AMD graphics card since I made the switch to PC. I've spent about I'm not gonna say I've spent a considerable amount of money on Nvidia fucking graphics cards, and I think I'd look like a fucking arsehole if I suddenly turned around and went. Remember all those graphics cards I paid for? It turns out these ones I got for free are better. Yeah, cool. I just yeah. switched like, off. to NVIDIA. But like, if and you I will spend, never go back. you know, if you've got a history, like here's here's my stance on it. If you've got a history of of like using something, 
and you genuinely feel it's good to the point where you've been investing your own cash into that thing. And when people come to you and they go, what's your, what's your gear? Like, you know, what's your rig? And you go, oh, I've got either like I've got, and you know, I like AMD. I've got AMD CPU, GPU, or I've got Intel and NVIDIA or any combination of anything. And I've been spending my own money on it. Then if that company turns around and goes, okay, well, this guy likes our stuff. He's been positively, you know, promoting us without ever being yeah. asked to do so. Then that guy is in a perfect situation where he gets to go, yeah, I would love to work with you guys because I really like your fucking products. Mm -hmm. But here's, here's the thing for me. I don't, I don't want to be some fucking billboard. Like that wouldn't, that wouldn't sit right for me where anybody who wants to can just kind of look at me and think, I oh, will throw him whatever and he'll promote whatever. Like that'd be that'd be the wrong place to end up on. Up I, think, in. I think it's easy for people to fall into that because you're getting free stuff at the end of the day. You are getting yeah, free someone stuff is, is giving you stuff. Cool. And and there's a difference between like like yourself who's you know, you're a grown man, you're in your thirties and I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Um but you can you can make that sort of decision. You can make that um that judgment call based on your own morals and, and you've grown up through stuff. And, you know, whereas some other people are going to be a bit more, wow, I've got this 500 pound graphics card given to me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, of course, I'm going to be positive about it. Yeah. And that's, you don't necessarily get that same sort of level of morals from everybody, I think. Uh, I mean, to be fair, I got given some free yeah. stuff. I got, um, I got some Rocket stuff. I gave it to you, Crafty, didn't I? Yeah. Oh! Yeah. yeah. Music. Yeah, I got a mouse and a, a no, mouse. My dog mat. ate my mouse, so Phil just sent me the shit that they gave him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here, I've got this free lump of shit here. You can have it. Yeah, yeah literally. I, I, I never plugged it in. Still anything. got it now. Yeah. No problem. Like, <laughs> at the end of the day, I don't really give a flying fuck what anybody else does or how they run their channel or how they you know, go about conducting their business. But I reserve the right to be allowed to sit here and laugh at it. You know what I mean? That's like that's my part in the process. I get to sit here and I get to discuss things and joke about things and make fun of people. So they can all sit there under big piles of fucking GPUs and I'll sit here laughing at them for just being so fucking transparent. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Hysteria's just said it in the chat as well. It, it, it boils down to games too. Because, you know, you'll get people that are very, very positive about a game in the build-up to release... They, you know, they get Ooh. it for nothing, and then and there's no coverage. You know, it's oh, dude. Titan hey guys, T Martin here, and I'm wicked excited to bring yeah. you Battlefield Four until this Broncos assignment over, and <laughs> fuck you, Battlefield Four. Exactly. I mean, yeah, um, it happened a lot with Titanfall. Happened a lot with Far Cry Four as well. Mm -hmm. Like that, that had a lot of yeah. build-up yeah. coverage, yeah. and then not a lot of actual coverage. I noticed that. Who they, didn't know that that was going to be what it was, though? It was always going to be like very similar mechanically to three which was yeah. a great game it just had a lot of bugs and the writing in it was ropey as balls mm -hmm. you know it wasn't particularly interesting and that's a shame because it should have been the most interesting one they'd done but it, it wasn't pagan min was just like hi i'm pagan min and i'm a real fucking dude and then he fucks off and yeah five and a half hours gameplay later you shoot him in the fucking <clears throat> mouth you could you could have sat there as well in that opening scene, can't you? And you you can complete it that way. Yeah, you could just sit there for thirteen minutes, and it'll... we we could have. A oh, when he fucks off, and you and you game escape. You waited for and waited for and waited for and waited for, and still didn't deliver. So, what game? You know, what was a game that you sat down, you 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 waited for fucking years to release? When it did, it was that. Poor, you know, and for me that was dying light. I, uh, I, aliens I, I wait, your marines. I waited for years <laughs> for dying light, and it was, it wasn't appalling, but it wasn't great. It was, it was pretty average. If you played Far Cry Three, then you'd, you'd had a better experience just without the zombies, you know. Mm. Am I yeah. game for that? Is TBD. 
to be determined because honestly, it's it's mm, the division. I was yeah, I was gonna say that thing's got a, the the hype train for that started fucking way too early. It's going to be but, bad, Sean. It, oh yeah, I, I don't have very high expectations for it um, at this point. And for a while, I did because it. it on the surface, it offered it. What it sh seemed to offer was everything I ever wanted in a game, and then some. So I was fucking like all over it, and then. Yeah, but by reality, then, you should have already like <laughs> <laughs> having questions. <laughs> uh, this seems too good to be true. It looks a bit Destiny. I think a bit sort of third-person oh, Destiny in like a bombed-out Seattle. Yeah. I hope it's. Oh no! No trousers. Yeah, I, do, I just can't it's see be it bad. being... It's, gonna be it's not going to be the game that everyone had sort of hyped it out to be when they first saw that original trailer. Like, it just won't be, because like nothing will ever stand up to that. It's, it's like, going to have the usual Ubi flaws. Like, this is, this is the thing. It's an Ubisoft game, and there's this, like, overarching philosophy that they've been running at with their games lately. And there's nothing that, they can do at this seconds. point to change it. Like, even, even when Assassin's Creed sucked ass and Far Cry 4 sucked ass, and what else did they release that was a complete fucking failure that I wiped out of my brain? Can't remember. A few games last year that they had out, and they were all shit. And there's nothing that they can do by then to remove that underlying Ubisoft philosophy from The Division or from Rainbow Six Siege. It's in there. It's contaminating it. Yeah. already and the process is too far along so like I will play the Rainbow Six Siege Alpha tomorrow I think and I don't know I'll wait in the division and all but there is no hype train here the hype train died it yeah. fucking fell off the rails and exploded <laughs> Rainbow Six Siege is another one isn't it like people were getting very worked up and hyped about that when they first saw the original trailers and now that Alpha footage has come out it was a bit Oh, like is that it? You know, it's it's not. I don't know. I think it's. It, it, you, there's always going to be a level of um, when when you get these pre teaser trailers. It's the same with Battlefront as well. It's never going to live up to what you've imagined in your mind in in the build up between that that teaser trailer and the eighteen months when you then get to play the game. If that makes sense. But you, yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll have built it up in your own mind in that 18 months, and then when you actually get to play it, it will never be as impressive. Like, Destiny is a solid, good game, but it was never going to live up to the hype behind it, the $500 million of marketing, frankly, that, that, was, that was put behind that game. It's it, entirely it, possible that uh, the length of time being put into marketing a game and building it up and PRing the shit out of it is just too long now. Yeah. Like we saw our we saw our first images of Battlefront. Like here's a here's a perfect example. We saw our first images of Battlefront over a year ago. Yeah. Over a year ago. That's a that's a year over a year of hype for a video game that in no way existed as a video game. You know, look at Star Citizen. Yeah, it was one three two the years ago, wasn't it? Fucking stupid leg thing. Yeah. And there's been hype building ever since, and it can't ever live up to it. Star Citizen. There's another fine example of hype before product. It's nothing but hype. Like nothing actually exists that could be considered more than a tech demo. Well, I think but everyone's sure like, Star Citizen's going to be the that best thing in the movie world. as well. And the movie had very a few cutscenes, and you know, and people have been a black stormtrooper. Yeah, <laughs> surely. Yeah, not. Yeah. That's yeah. the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. No, I saw, I saw <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. But that's the dumbest thing. I've ever heard. Here's here's the simple truth: there there is no way that's that the there can be a pride. black person in the future, and even if there is a black person in the future. There's no conceivable way that person might just put on a dead stormtrooper's outfit. Fuck. Okay, shit. I'm done. Damn it. Didn't <laughs> think of that, yeah. Logic. Ah. 
<laughs> Plus, right. you don't always have a never-ending army of clones. Eventually, they run out, and you just need to get some poor bastard to put on the armor that the clone died in. But stormtroopers are all white. Yeah. Because they're Boba Fett's children. Who was a Maori, strangely enough. <laughs> You're preaching to the, the guy the fuck is having... <laughs> These pale white kids. <laughs> oh, I did laugh a lot. But right. fuck, yeah, I mean, but that, that kind of like ties in with, you know, the expectation. I mean, we spoke about it, uh, I think it was right at the beginning of the podcast. The expectation of the consumer. Okay, we're spending money. We're spending a lot of money. And we should expect top quality products. But are we expecting too much? I don't think we are. But I think we're expecting too much if we think that they can cater for everyone. And at the moment, I think we are. I think we're at the stage now, especially a guy who's not, I mean, myself, I'm not massively into first-person shoes. I like games that have a storyline and what have you. And people are beasting them at the moment. The games are coming at the moment. People are absolutely destroying them. And I think it's bad. I think, I think it's distracting from, you know, people's creativity. There's too much build-up. I mean, Dying Light was a good example, because we saw that at Eurogame, like, what, two years ago? Two years ago. At least, yeah, it was two and a half years ago now. And then, you know, it looked shit then, to be fair. Um, but then, obviously, like, in the build-up, when you go to the other events and bits and pieces, like, it looked better. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it, it obviously, like, they were, they were releasing, like, a level of gameplay ages ago. You almost want them to keep it quiet. Just like the, you don't need that hype. They don't need that pressure going on. You just want that. <laughs> you just want it to just crack on for a little while and then and then just release it. I think yeah, they, they just want to sell a game. To be fair, it's, you know, and and people are nowadays. Nowadays, I mean, we've as I was saying the scanner earlier. I think you know people have gone from one stage where they're. Ex they will literally take anything from anyone. And they're now at the stage where um, the consumers have their rights, which, you know, I agree with. Of course we should. Um, but I think it's gone a little bit silly now where it's, it's got to the stage where, I mean, I'm a consumer and I'm slacking myself off. <laughs> it's got to a stage where we expect too much. And if we don't get it, we're not going to accept it, you know. These people are still human. And I think games like Dying Light are a victim of it. A direct victim of it, actually. And it was, it was never going to be good enough. I think, I think they, all, they almost realised it was never going to be good enough. And they kind of, you know, nodded and put the game out, knowing that there was going to be a massive section of people that were going to hate it for certain reasons, and that there was absolutely nothing they could do about. And I, I, I hold my hand up. I was one of the people who, halfway through, I stopped playing it myself. So I'm part of the problem myself. And yeah, it's, 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 it's worrying. I, I think we need to... Um, I think we need to be a little, a little bit more sens sensible about the whole thing, and how we, f how we feel about computer games because they are computer games and they're there for our entertainment. And we, I don't think the movies we go and see get as much stringent, um, adverse <laughs> argument as as we give computer games. Um, when I saw a film myself today, and it was pretty poor, but it was no one there I could moan at. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, well, I think we one know. that uh, was a surprising come from behind underdog it was um, Blood Dragon for Far Cry Three. You guys know, right. Did you guys play that one? It was amazing. Because Upper, Upper Low Man made a good point uh, about, exp uh, he called them expand-alone titles. 
uh, expansions that are actually standalone. I think recently Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon was one, um, the Metal Gear Solid 5 recent releases, and oh. there was Infamous. One for, uh, Infamous, Infamous First Light. Yeah. yeah. Um, he wanted to know what we thought about um, shorter games more frequently uh, at, at a lower price than traditional $60 uh, was. So they used to exist. I was talking with one of the guys from uh, Paradox, Paradox Interactive, that publishing company. And there used to be this market called Double A Development. You know, there was Triple A's and there was like Indies and there was Double A's. And then they kind of died out. Over time, it just seems to be something that the market forgot about. And now they seem to be coming back, which is nice. You know, these mid-priced games that have, like, a degree of a budget behind them. And, you know, there's some real talent working on them. But they're not, like, part of the big AAA machine. So they've got, like, a lot of soul and stuff mm -hmm. as well. And it's actually coming back into gaming now. And it's a really fucking good thing. Because at least some really awesome, uh, awesome games. I think indie like, games fall into that category a little bit. I mean, they're yeah, not exactly. AA, but... Like, Blood of... Dragon was dope. That was awesome. Everything about that game was cool. It's 80 shtick. The, the, the reload animations, the fucking terrible dialogue, everything was just really enjoyable. But never would have carried for a full 60-buck game. Just wouldn't have worked if it went on for that long. It would have been tiresome. But at the price point it was at, it was fucking... It was awesome. But do you, do you think it would have got released if Far Cry 3 hadn't done so well? Honestly, probably. Like, there's this weird culture creeping into Ubisoft. Ubisoft looks like a company in... Almost like a Gemini right now, where there's this one side of Ubisoft where they keep doing all this stupid, like, decision-making in AAA gaming. And then this other side where they're putting out really awesome shit like Valiant Hearts and Child of Light and, you know, Blood Dragon and all this stuff. So I think it, w I think it would have come out anyway. I think it was always going to exist. And I think they would have just released it anyway because digital distribution equals a largely costless method of taking risk. Yeah, I suppose because it was all on the same engine and bits and pieces, wasn't it? It was... A... It was... It was, it was... I don't, I'll be honest, I didn't play it. I watched a couple of videos, but it was just the same sort of assets but graphically changed on the outside, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah fair enough. Cool. It's probably quite low cost then. <laughs> so I'd like to see a lot more of that stuff. Like the Ground Zeroes, I had, I had no interest in buying Phantom Pain until I played Ground Zeroes because why would I buy something that's possibly going to be a garbage port to PC and the controls are wonky and horrible? Whether I like Metal Gear Solid or not, like you're asking a big risk. But Ground Zero is released and I'm like, wow, this port is actually fucking amazing. It controls beautifully. It looks, you know, smashing. It runs fantastically. And it was like a little fun demo for the bigger game. It was great. Like, I love these little things. I didn't even really know what that was. I was like, is this... Because there was no really... Uh, news around it, and it was just like, "Here's a Metal Gear Solid game," and I'm not into that series, so I was like, "I don't, I don't understand." It was cheaper. Yeah, it only cost like 15 bucks. Oh, that's cool. I didn't even know that. So it was great. Yeah, that is nice. I... The first light was oh. really good uh, for PlayStation 4. It was the expansion, the standalone expansion for Infamous, Second Son, and I believe it was free with PlayStation Plus last month or so? Uh... Jan January. It was January. Oh, it was? That yeah. was a long time ago. I yeah. thought it was sooner well. than that. Um, but it expanded on the story. It still had similar gameplay. You kind of got to learn more about uh, one of the side characters, and then it added kind of a new arena mode, like arena battle mode. Which was cool that infamous uh, second son didn't have, and it, it was uh, I didn't I haven't finished it yet. It's it was pretty long. There's a decent amount of content. It was really good, uh, so I definitely appreciate that that kind of thing. Yeah, I didn't download it. I haven't finished um, second son to be fair. So oh, I did. obviously because I don't finish games. 
I don't often, unless they're really good. And I but really do you them. even? Do I? I even. <laughs> I can't. Nothing. I did not say anything. Oh, the next topic's for you, Crafty. Unless Scanner yeah. is about to say something. No, I'm good. Nope, fuck Scanner. Mike D, had a good one. A solid Crafty recently dumped YouTube, and I've seen many others do the same. One thing that most have in common, though, is the plan to possibly continue streaming on Twitch in the future. So I was wondering, uh, what do you guys think that will be the next big thing in social gaming. At this point, I see YouTube and Twitch as being neck and neck with Twitch coming up from behind. Crafty, I'll let you jump off on that. Wow. Um, okay. Um, dumped, I think, is the wrong terminology for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, leaving it was a huge... Um, it was a huge decision to leave. It, it wasn't something that I really planned on, to be honest. It was just something that made sense at the time, but um, to talk about the differences between Twitch and YouTube and um, what they really mean to a, a, a content producer, um, I, I suppose it comes down to convenience, if I'm being entirely honest. Um, YouTube is extremely convenient for the viewer. They can go to any of their content producers whenever they want, and there you have a library of videos, including the live ones that we all like you to click like and favorite on. <laughs> and they're there. Um, but what's a lot more convenient for the producer is to just stream. What's going to be the, the major difference between the two? I'm not sure, dude. Mike, I. <laughs> that's a really good question, mate. I mean, I, at the moment, YouTube for me, <clears throat> I don't think it's dying. A lot of YouTube commentators will say that it's dying. It's it's not at all. They get millions of views every day. It's not dying at all. They're they're, they're lying to you, sir. They're lying to you. Yep. YouTube's getting millions upon millions of views every day. Um, I mean, there's, there's, there's no telling for taste, I suppose. I mean, there's certain people that within the gaming community we, we all hope didn't get as many views as they did because their content is pretty poor. Um, not because we don't dislike them as human beings, they just they just don't really do very good videos and seem to get millions of views. Um, but then you have people who, you know, have full-time jobs. A lot of us do, especially, you know, there's a lot of YouTube commentators now who have actually left, they, they started YouTube while they was at college and they're now out of college and they've got jobs and they've only got a certain amount of time during a week. And they stream, you know. And I don't think Twitch has overtaken it. I think it's 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 a convenience thing, and they don't have time to sit down, record an episode of what have you, record it, edit it, you know, make a thumbnail, put it up. Yeah, that is a lot. Put it up, you know. But then there's the other side of it where people, you know. That, that's what they want. They want live action. They want live footage. And I think it's all, I, honestly, I think it's all down to convenience. I think YouTube is convenience to the viewer. And I think Twitch is convenience for the guy who's supplying it. Um, it's, Twitch is a hell of a lot. As a content producer, and I'm talking to everyone that's on this stream, our content producers. As a content producer, Twitch is the way to go. You can literally just stream whenever you want, wherever the feeling takes you, and you're online. But for the viewer, 
that's a different story. Now, unless you're huge or you have a massive following or what have you, I suppose it's the same, um, <laughs> then maybe the videos are better because they can pick them up where and when they're, they, you know, they're in town, they have internet connection, or they're at home, they're off school, they can watch those videos. So it's, it's, it's a weird one. It's, it's, it's a bit of a conundrum. I don't think anything will take over Twitch or YouTube for at least the next five years. I think we're stuck with this now. It's kind of making the best of a bad thing. Next five years at least. Maybe something will come in the future, but next five years, Google have got their, their hands on their bollocks. On our bollocks, should I say. Yeah, and we're really not going with it. Yeah. Next four or five years, we're not going anywhere. They've they they've got us pretty tight until they find something else they can make money out of. But at the moment, I think Twitch is convenient for the producer, and YouTube is convenient for the watcher, for the sub subscriber. But remember <coughs> those videos that the guys putting out for you to watch on YouTube do take a ton more effort than the Twitch shit. Those videos actually take a hell of a lot of effort. And a lot of people don't know that. Um, so I just want to say that. And that, that, and that was my face. Phil just right. looks fucking confused. Yeah, man. Hell. Um, I, I, well, uh, so like, based on the notes that I wrote like much, much earlier about this, I'd say that YouTube is, 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 a, is a better service at the moment. It's more established. It's, it, it just works better. And, and people like the fact that you can go back and watch something like, on demand whenever you can. Whereas um, Twitch is obviously a live interactive um, thing. So, you know, it, it kind of, they're, they're two very kind of different environments. Personally, I prefer um, like making a video to to live streaming mainly because I'm shite at games and I don't like people seeing that live. I like to be able to edit out deaths. <laughs> but the, yeah, I mean that's just me. I don't know what's what like the future of it is. I and mean, going back to Mike's question, I don't know. Something will come up that, like because like ten years ago you wouldn't have picked YouTube. You wouldn't have thought that people would live stream video games and do it for a living. So. You don't know yeah. what's going to be around the corner. Someone could come up with a website tomorrow that will just blow you away. That's why it's fun. It's it's unpredictable. Gaming always has been. That's that's the attraction of it. And it only makes sense that any kind of media or you know variation of established media's that grow up around an unpredictable industry are themselves going to be inherently unpredictable. Nice hat. That's. That's why it's so hard to, like, who'd have fucking known that, you know, you could make a living on YouTube playing computer games? Yeah, yeah. If I mean a fucker who would have predicted that, I'll call him a liar. Like, oh, I saw this coming, really? Then how come you ain't rich? You know? That's why it's good. Yeah, that's three years ago, I didn't even know people did it. I didn't even know people, like, recorded video games and... Talks about it and stuff, so yeah, you don't know what's, what's going to be. Yeah, Twitch is doing massive now, isn't it? Yeah, and Twitch is only going to do people. I like, I still maintain my prediction that over the coming years, Twitch will morph from solely being a gaming thing to being about a lot more because it's you know, it's now owned by a parent company who has little interest in the inherent ecosystem and kind of, you know, philosophy of the product, they just know they bought a product. It's Amazon it, bought it, isn't it? Yeah, it will then become about how do we maximize, you know, the return for the money that we put into it, and Twitch will become a thing where people just live stream. It doesn't have to be gaming. Mm. They've already branched out into music, and they're seeing massive benefit with that. And it will stay going. As long as somebody is willing to put on a show and draw a crowd, they're not going to turn you down. They're not going to say, we don't want the ad revenue from this because we're about games. They're going to go, sweet. People are watching this dude fucking 
snake charm for two hours. You know, 150,000 people are tuning in to watch him fucking charm snakes. Let's let's do a snake charming thing. Let's put him on the front page. Yeah. Yeah, That's and there'll business. be, you know, there'll be live, I don't know, fucking some sort of gaming chair review going on while someone is graffitiing a wall will be another live stream. And yeah, they, there's absolutely yeah. more opportunities there for them. Like, I guarantee you what would make a huge amount of sense for Twitch would be like a partnership with something like X Games. Yeah. Or something like that, like live streaming the X Games. That'd be fucking massive on Twitch. And then they're, then they're like encroaching on old media, you know, places. And that's not something YouTube can do right now. On YouTube, if you want people to watch your video, you put it on YouTube. If you want people to watch your live stream, you don't live stream on fucking YouTube. It's a travesty over there. It's just not going to handle your room. I've seen companies pick fucking Ustream over YouTube. Mm. And Ustream is a fucking travesty of tech. Like, I'm surprised that entire website isn't on fire every time I go and check it out. <laughs> <laughs> the, only, the only time I've heard of Ustream was um, like the first time I tried to stream from the PlayStation. You press the share button. It goes, do you want to go through Twitch or Ustream? I was like, what the fuck is Ustream? Yeah. I'll go for Twitch. <laughs> yeah, that was it. It's like they're inherently complementary things. They appeal to the same market for very different reasons. So the smart people have their their YouTube, you know, channel, and then they live stream maybe once or twice a week, and they grow their profile, and they interact with their fans in the chat, and everybody has fun. And the smart streamers have their highlights going up on YouTube, and they have entire channels with millions of subs that are just watching highlights of a stream. There's no extra work mm. being generated. They're highly, highly complementary for the content creator. And no offense to either industry, no offense to the games industry, or no offense to uh, to YouTube or Google or Amazon or Twitch or any of these interested parties. I'm only interested in two fucking people, the content creator and the consumer. They're my primary concern. Yeah. And there's huge, there's huge benefit to them to just have these two complementary things. So while there's need for them and there's market for them, they will both grow and prosper until they decide to try and directly compete with each other and then people will throw down their gauntlets. The guys who think they can earn more with Twitch will go, Twitch is better, and the guys who think they can earn more with YouTube will go, YouTube is better, and that's when it will get kind of weird and stupid. I don't think, I mean, certainly from YouTube's point of view, I don't think YouTube make enough revenue from gaming for them to um, try and encourage people not to move over to Twitch. I don't All think it, it would make enough difference for YouTube. If you remove record label owned channels, yeah, and even like leave some of them in, the top twenty channels on YouTube are gaming. Yeah, yeah, but um, well, but things like Smosh hit that. I mean, Smosh isn't all about video games. Yeah, but a lot of it is. Like that's just an expansion of of what it is that they do. But like. A lot of it is, and there's a huge amount of us as well. Yeah, no, there, yeah, yeah. It's and then there's amount. like mid tier guys and top tier guys. There's fucking dudes in, and this freaks me out every time I think about it because I remember how uncultured and fucking ignorant I am. But there's guys out there with like 27 million subs playing all kinds of weird games I've never heard of talking about them in a language I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking, it terrifies me. Yeah. It's like I'm so fucking oblivious to the world market, the global market, and how that operates on, on YouTube. It terrifies me. There was, a, there was a thing. Someone shared a screenshot with me the other day. It might have been earlier today, actually. And it was, um, it was Korean guys um, fuck up some white bitches. With, and it was a U-porn thing. And it was, it was League of Legends. <laughs> <laughs> And it was like some Korea guys beating some American guys on, on League of Legends. It was incredible. It was a really funny caption. Yeah. Nice. All right, but so yeah, you I think the fuck up. Yeah, I'm here. Time for an outro, mate. <clears throat> Is that it? Yeah. All right. That's all I got to add. Sorry, Sorry I was out of it. I uh, 
Kind of got in a cranky mood and lost lost everything. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Phil, Lee, thank you guys for coming on. We appreciate it. We'll have you guys back on again if you're ever interested. Um, British invasion. Always good to have uh, a rotation of guests, but also have people come back, too. It's always a good thing. Uh, for those that missed it at the beginning, if you're interested, please check out the Patreon page. It helps out the website a lot, like more than you could ever imagine. Uh, we greatly appreciate anyone that's willing to help out uh, make any pledges. Seriously, it can be any pledge amount, starting at a dollar and anything higher than that. Uh, other than that, check out the website. As always, there's stuff going up there. Um, Scanner and Jess and Digital Ghost, a bunch of other people, they're, they're keeping the thing going. Um, everything's going really well. <laughs> Can't ask for better than that. We will be back here next Monday, same time, same place. I do not actually have guests lined up for next week. Now I think about it. We have someone in the pipeline for an idea, but I totally forgot to send out an invite to them because my career demands 100% of my time now. Lucky me. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you to everyone also that tweeted out the stream or retweeted our tweets. Greatly appreciate that. That helps more than you could possibly imagine. It really imagine. does. Seriously. But that's it. Everyone have a great night. We'll catch you guys next week. Good night, bro. Mike, what a wasted Good opportunity. Night. You're so right. The Bye, British guys. are coming. The British are leaving. <laughs> the British <Okay>. are stupid. <laughs> <laughs>